Deep down on our ocean floors, there are worlds that science has no clues about. We might have discovered what is happening in distant galaxies, but we know next to nothing about what is happening on our ocean beds. So, when NASA began deep sea exploration, many scientists were shocked and amazed at their discoveries. Beyond the similarities between deep sea and outer space, NASA has discovered life forms that many scientists have called early into our ecosystems, thus posing serious questions. Why is NASA exploring the depth of our oceans? What discoveries have NASA made so far? And what does this mean for us? Join us in this video as we examine how Joe Rogan breaks silence on NASA's terrifying underwater discovery. Since its establishment, NASA has been working hard to further our understanding of the universe, especially outer space. But now, NASA has decided to explore our ocean floors, hoping it will help our understanding of outer space. Our oceans cover over 70% of the Earth's surface, but over 80% of them remain unexplored. In fact, it is often claimed that we know more about the surface of Mars and the Moon than about the ocean floor on our planet. But NASA is on a mission to change this trend. The U.S. Space Agency is exploring the deep ocean to search for clues about what oceans on other planets could look like and push the limits of science and technology in one of the most extreme environments on our planet. According to its top officials, the mission is filled with wonder, danger, and a significant risk of implosion. The hope is that their underwater discoveries will help unlock some of the mysteries in outer space while also testing some of the equipment and experiments needed for missions elsewhere in the solar system. While this new direction might surprise many, it has been an expected move in the scientific community for many years. Over the years, scientists have found that Earth's ocean depths are surprisingly similar to some of the conditions NASA expects to find on other worlds in our solar system. They could even provide clues about where scientists should be searching for alien life. The deepest parts of Earth's oceans are known as the Hedal Zone, named after Hades, the Greek god of the underworld. It is a forbidding place, worthy of its name. Consisting of deep trenches and troughs, it extends 11 kilometers below the surface of the world's oceans. Cumulatively, these depths account for an area of seabed equivalent to the size of Australia. Yet few vehicles can survive plunging into this dark abyss. It is at these depths that NASA scientists are attempting to explore and probe the limits of life on Earth. In partnership with the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution WHOI, in Massachusetts. This partnership has led engineers from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California to start building a new autonomous underwater vehicle called Orpheus. Named after the ancient Greek hero who traveled to the underworld and back, Orpheus is designed to map the more inaccessible depths. With visual navigation technology similar to NASA's Perseverance Mars rover, Orpheus uses highly sensitive cameras to identify rock formations, shells, and other features on the ocean floor to build up three-dimensional maps dotted with landmarks. This would allow the robot to find its way and recognize places it has already been, but should also help it shed new light on the biodiversity of this harsh environment. According to Tim Shank, a deep-sea biologist who is leading WHOI's Hadal exploration program, Orpheus is a gateway vehicle. If it works, there is no place in the ocean where you can't go. This is not the first time Shank has tried to reach the dark depths of the Hadal zone. In 2014, Orpheus's predecessor, Nereus, was sent down to the Kermadec Trench, which lies northeast of New Zealand. Unfortunately, the underwater vehicle imploded about 10 kilometers down, most likely due to the immense pressure. After 12 hours, we saw it coming up in small pieces, says Shank. He added that the loss of Nereus made them rethink how they explored the deep sea. At about the size of a quad bike and weighing around 550 pounds, Orpheus is designed to be much lighter, smaller, and cheaper than previous underwater vehicles. This change in design is also expected to make it nimbler, allowing it to get into trenches and vents in the seafloor that have never been explored before. For a long time, marine biologists thought that life in the huddle zone was impossible. 
but as deep sea submersibles began venturing into the region in the first half of the 20th century, it became apparent that life could survive there. In the past, it was believed that all living organisms were sustained by a food chain ultimately fueled by photosynthesis. Plants, algae, and some marine bacteria in surface waters convert the sun's energy into sugars, which they store in their organic matter. These plants are then eaten by herbivores, which in turn are eaten by carnivorous animals. Scientists were convinced that organisms on the ocean floor survived off dead organic matter, the carcasses of animals, feces, and the steady fall of other organic detritus or marine snow drifting down from above. But it was thought there was not enough food to sustain much in the way of sea creatures, and the deepest areas were believed to still be too dark and cold for life. But this perception of the deep ocean changed in 1977 when a U.S. research team dropped a remotely operated vehicle 8,000 feet into the Pacific Ocean. The vehicle was dispatched to take images of hydrothermal vents, where heat from volcanic activity seeped from the ocean floor. To their amazement, the scientists discovered vibrant ecosystems around the vents, teeming with marine organisms, such as translucent snailfish and amphipods, tiny flea-like crustaceans that had never been seen before. With this discovery, scientists all around the world came across a whole new way of living on Earth. They were seeing animals that don't require direct sunlight, as they live off chemicals coming out of the sea floor. However, this discovery left many scientists perplexed. How could species in the Hadal zone survive such crushing pressure? In fact, the pressure is at 15,000 pounds per square inch. At this depth, this pressure would squeeze out the individual cells of an animal. However, since that first sighting in 1977, scientists have discovered that organisms living at such depths have adapted on a cellular level to survive down there. Creatures in the Hadal zone, such as giant amphipod crustaceans and snailfish, have enzymes called piezolites that stop their cellular membranes and proteins from being crushed under extremely high pressure. The piezolites counteract the pressure by increasing the space that proteins take up inside the organism's cells to counteract the weight of the water around it. It's like putting the stakes up in a tent, says Shank. Discovering organisms that can not only survive, but also thrive in such an oppressive environment raises essential questions for biologists looking beyond the realms of our own planet for alien life. The question is, might it also be found on other ocean worlds? For example, the pressure level between Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, and the Hadal zone is awfully similar. Europa is said to have a saltwater ocean that is thought to be between 40 to 100 miles deep and contains twice as much as all of Earth's oceans combined. Also, sunlight doesn't penetrate below Europa's thick ice sheet, which is crisscrossed by cracks and fractures. These similarities make the exploration of the Hadal zone critical for NASA, as doing so would help prepare the way for how to explore outer space. The assumption is that a robot capable of exploring the Earth's Hadal zone could do the same on a frozen moon 628 million kilometers away. The ocean floor is a great testbed for us to develop the technology that we need in order to have a successful mission to one of these ocean worlds, says Russell Smith, an engineer from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, who is part of the team building Orpheus. However, a robot operating in outer space or the deep ocean must be completely autonomous. The robot has to be able to make decisions, says Smith, noting that the aim is for Orpheus to be able to detect and classify environmental DNA and chemicals in the water, as well as bring back samples from the ocean floor. However, building a robot for the huddle zone would be incredibly challenging. Orpheus has to withstand intense pressure and extreme temperatures. This is because the water in the huddle zone is just above freezing, but in the hydrothermal vents, temperatures can reach 370 degrees Celsius. Developing a vehicle that is going to survive is really hard, says Smith. You need really thick walls to prevent the electronics from getting crushed or wet. Orpheus is partly constructed from syntactic foam, a buoyant material composed of microscopic glass spheres set in epoxy resin. The foam used in Orpheus 
comes from leftover material produced for film director James Cameron's Deep Sea Challenger, which descended to the bottom of the Mariana Trench in the Western Pacific in 2012. As it is pitch black in the deep ocean, Orpheus is equipped with a huge flashlight. If the light stays on the entire time, it will quickly drain the robot's battery, leaving it stranded at the crushing depths. To conserve power, Orpheus will switch to a low power mode when it isn't taking images or samples, says Smith. As part of these missions in 2017, NASA launched the Systematic Underwater Biogeochemical Science and Exploration Analog, also known as Subsea, to bring together the fields of space and ocean exploration. To date, they have carried out two missions with remotely operated vehicles to hydrothermal vents in the Pacific Ocean. The volcanic activity around the Loihi Seamount, around 30 kilometers off the coast of Hawaii, and Gorda Ridge, 120 kilometers off the U.S. coast where California and Oregon meet, is thought to be similar to what may be found in the ocean worlds on Europa and Saturn's moon, Enceladus. According to Darlene Lim, a NASA geobiologist who is leading the subsea program and preparing astronauts for exploration of the moon and deep space, the whole project was predicated on finding areas in our deep ocean that had a really good analogous nature to what is predicted to be active in places like Enceladus. Scientists used the two subsea missions to better understand the geology and chemistry of these vents and the life found around them. While it was somewhat hidden from us for hundreds of years, the Hadal Zone is far from being devoid of life, as it supports a very rich and somewhat alien ecosystem. One of the deepest dwelling creatures found to date was a Gientamphipod that was more than three inches long and lived more than five miles beneath the surface in the deepest part of the Peru-Chile Trench known as Richard's Deep. Named Eurythenes atacamensis and closely related to shrimp, this crustacean is a scavenger that lives off bits of dead sea creatures that drift down from above. It was discovered in 2018 by researchers, including Johanna Wieston, a marina biologist at Newcastle University. It is thought to be among the most abundant of the creatures living in the trench, alongside at least three species of strange and rather fragile snailfish and long-legged isopods. Each has evolved to survive extreme pressures, cold temperatures, and pitch blackness in the Hadal zone. These vents are very innocuous, says Lim. You have to look very closely for a temperature change in the water coming up through the ground and interacting with very cold seawater. Even that act alone is very valuable for how we might anticipate having to do exploration on some of these ocean worlds in our solar system. While sending robots to Europa and Enceladus may still be decades away, NASA scientists are already applying what they have learned from deep ocean exploration to space missions. In 2024, NASA is expected to send a robotic rover to look for water ice at our moon's south pole. The mission, known as the Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, or VIPER, will study ice near the lunar crater Nobile in hopes that it could be mined as a resource for rocket fuel or drinking water. While not operating underwater, a rover roaming on the moon will face many of the same technical challenges. We're taking all the learnings from subsea and applying it to VIPER, says Lim, who is also the deputy lead project scientist on VIPER. The subsea program aimed to ensure that scientists met their research goals in highly challenging conditions, both from a communications and technology perspective. From an operations perspective, ocean and space exploration also have a lot in common. In both fields, robots are sent to explore treacherous environments that humans cannot reach, supported by remote teams of scientists. However, it could also help prepare astronauts for controlling robotic equipment from a lunar base in the future. Fewer than 10 scientists went out to sea on the subsea mission, and they worked with a larger group of colleagues on shore. For the Viper mission, a team will operate the rover on Earth in near real time. It will have to analyze data and make decisions very rapidly. Efficient communication is critical during these missions, says Zara Mirmalek, a social scientist with NASA who helps scientists prepare for exploration in extreme environments and has worked on both the subsea and Viper programs.
For deep sea exploration, scientists have to change decisions all the time, depending on the ocean conditions, weather, and salinity. You know that you are going to have less time than you planned for, says Mirmalek. It's a lot harder to work in the deep ocean because the conditions are so challenging to the technology. On space missions, communication is extremely limited, says Mermalek. To prepare for outer space conditions, Mermalek restricted the subsea scientists to communicating with each other just once a day. Everything we learned by working together with the oceanographic community has been completely invaluable, really priceless, in helping us have confidence in the process that we're using to design our science operations for Viper, says Lim. Much like missions off our planet, those to the bottom of the oceans also allow humanity to look at the Earth in new ways. While NASA says its oceanographic explorations have yielded thousands of scientific discoveries, they are also providing information that could be vital if we hope to continue living in a world with healthy oceans. We need to understand our oceanic environments if we are to save them, says Laura Lorenzoni, ocean biology and biogeochemistry program scientist with the Science Mission Directorate at NASA. This is critical for life on Earth, and the sustained measurements NASA has done and continues to do are fundamental for ensuring a sustainable use of our ocean resources, Lorenzoni says. It means that with each step towards the exploration of other worlds, we also learn a little bit more about some of the most unexplored parts of our blue planet. So far, scientists have made some very intriguing discoveries while exploring the deep sea. From gigantic seamounts and the deepest dwelling fish to a mysterious golden orb and puzzling methane leaks, here are some of the best deep sea discoveries of 2023. In September, researchers of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, dredged up a mysterious golden orb from the sea floor in the Gulf of Alaska. Initial analysis revealed that although it was biological in origin, scientists had no idea what it was. Researchers plucked the golden orb from a seamount around 10,000 feet below the surface using a remotely operated vehicle, or ROV. The mysterious object was around four inches wide and appeared to be attached to a rock. When it was pulled to the surface, it lost most of its structure and melted into a gloopy pile. Scientists were divided on what the orb was. Some thought it was an egg case, others suspected it was a sponge, while others noted it could be something else entirely. The orb's identity is still unknown. Its gold color is also a mystery. Since no natural light penetrates to these depths, it's often hard to determine why certain colors emerge, researchers wrote. Another discovery was made in July, when researchers explored an ancient deep-sea volcano off Canada's Pacific coastline and discovered that it was surprisingly still active and covered in up to one million football-size eggs. The underwater mountain towered 3,600 feet above the seafloor. It was spouting warm, nutrient-rich water that sustained a thriving ecosystem of deep-sea corals and a nursery for Pacific white skates, which are little-known sea creatures related to sharks and rays. The skates had laid countless rectangular-shaped eggs, known as mermaids' purses, on the seamount. Scientists estimated there could be anywhere from 100,000 to over a million eggs in the area. When these eggs hatch, the seamount likely provides an ideal habitat for the juveniles to grow before heading into the wider ocean. In April, scientists released footage of a group of ghostly white fish swimming around the seafloor more than five miles beneath the waves in one of the world's deepest trenches. The unidentified species of snailfish, which likely belongs to the genus Pseudoliparis, was spotted by researchers controlling an ROV in the Izu Ogasawara Trench near Japan at a depth of over 27,000 feet, which is more than 500 feet deeper than any fish have been seen before. The immense pressure at this depth would crush most fish, but snailfish have replaced their scales with a gelatinous layer that helps absorb this pressure. The snailfish also contain special chemicals that protect them on a cellular level. On the same expedition, researchers trapped and dragged up two snailfish in the nearby Japan Trench at a depth of over 26,000 feet, which makes them the deepest fish ever caught by humans. In a May study, 
researchers revealed that one of the most promising sites for future deep-sea mining activities is home to more than 5,000 newly identified animal species, which could all be in imminent danger if humans start mining the area. The Clarion Clipperton Zone is a large seafloor deformation that stretches from Mexico to Hawaii and covers around 2.3 million square miles, which is around 3.5 times the area of Alaska. It is covered in potato-sized spherical nodules that are rich in highly desired metals, such as manganese, cobalt, and nickel, as well as small concentrations of extremely valuable rare earth elements. Researchers analyzed more than 100,000 individual records collected from the area and estimated that 90% of the species they identified could be new to science. The fear is that deep sea mining, which could begin properly in the next few years, could threaten all these species. With the possibility of mining looming, it's doubly important that we know more about these really understudied habitats, researchers wrote. As the year rolls by and further research is carried out to understand the depth of our oceans, and by extension outer space, you can expect to find new and previously undiscovered forms of life, what some might even call alien. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.